Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Today I'm going to be looking at the JS-2, which was a Russian Soviet heavy tank created at the end of World War II and saw service in the latter parts of the war, including in the final assault on Berlin. I'm going to be having a look here at the Dragon JS-2M, the USTM production type. This is actually designed so that you can model a 1950s uh, post-war version, but actually the JS-2M designation was a bit of a misnomer. It was really known as 1944 model, and those produced by the USTM factory, which was in the Ukraine, had a number of differences to the original production models, as, as is shown on this kit insert. I've already built the majority of the kit here, as you can see. The main build of the kit itself is fairly uneventful, and you can get it to this stage without too many problems at all. The point at which I've left off is really getting the return rollers on and the idle wheels, and that's really because of the tracks. So the tracks in this kit are actually single link components, which allows you to create a really nice accurate track with nice track sag, but it's a real ball ache. So I got to the level of gluing together enough to cover the bottom of the tracks where the tank is actually sitting on the ground, and then this kind of got shelved. So just to show you how those tracks go together, you can actually just press fit, they actually friction fit together to start with for you to get these links together uh, and then be able to position them on the kit, which is a bit hard on the fingers after a while, but it's not too difficult. You can see here, assembling it is just a, a matter of time. Occasionally you do need to trim a couple of these links. What you end up with is a nice length of flexible track. The DSHK machine gun used for anti-aircraft defense is a really nice little kit within the kit. Really nice little rendition, but one thing it doesn't tell you is that this handle actually requires this central piece, which is just an injection lug, to be removed, and it will not fit properly if you don't. So just be aware if you're going to do this kit. Now for several areas on the kit, I'm going to be using a rotary tool, and if you do get one, it's best to get one that is cordless and has a variable speed that's really important otherwise you'll end up melting the plastic and what I'm going to be doing here is just thinning out pieces of this armor to a more scale representation and also in order to be able to get good clearance for the tracks So here you can see I'm comparing the stock thickness of those side armor guards with how they look after they've been thinned out with the rotary tool. You can see here I'm just thinning out the rear mudguard. Then I'm going on just to reduce down the thickness on the inner part of the main body of the kit just so that we don't get any issues with the tracks hitting that top part when we join the main hull together later on. On the top of the kit here, I've recreated a little bit of wear and tear, again, just using that rotary tool, just very subtle. And then on the left-hand side of the kit, I'm actually gonna create some battle damage, a little bit more severe. And to do that, I'm gonna start off on just removing the first part of this side skirt fender. And then just using the rotary tool again to, to thin that down to scale thickness. And then to create, here I want a, a shell shot, which has just grazed the tank and then come through some of that, that fender, some of the spatter, and then some sort of close proximity explosion, which has caused the damage on the back here. Now all of that's done, I just primed the whole model just with automotive black spray and then put it together temporarily whilst I spray it. Here I'm spraying with Formula P3, just with a bit of an ultimate airbrush thinner, and just giving this uh, a light overall coat. And I'm focusing on the main panel areas, so I'm not trying to create an even coat here. I'm really focusing on the middle of those panel areas and leaving some of the areas in shadow, like the underneath of the turret, and towards the edges of those panel areas. Now, in order to speed up drying, I'm actually just using a little handheld vacuum cleaner. This one's actually for a, we originally got for Pablo. 
Then I'm going to come back in, and this time I'm adding a little bit of army green to that dark P3, and just mixing that in the airbrush with a bit more thinner. And then just coming in again, as I did before, just focusing on the centre of those panels, not trying to create an even coat at all, just trying to create an illusion of depth and light and shade here. Then just coming in with Pablo's hairdryer again, just to speed up the drying process. Using this little pet hairdryer, it has a lower temperature, so there's no danger of melting your model. Finally coming in with a coat of pure army green, just again on the same centre of those panels, just to increase that contrast between the, the lighter areas and the darker areas, so creating an illusion of shadow. Next piece here, once the model is dry, is to come in with sort of dry brushing. So I'm just using the army green and some of this Liquitex heavy body white acrylic. This creates both a lighter shade of your main color and also thickens the paint, which makes it much more suitable for dry brushing. So just taking off the excess on my hand there and then just gently stroking it across. You can see it's just catching on all of the, the highlight points. So again, we're creating more tonal variety across this model. Next step is to put the graphite on the track. So these have been sprayed black. And then just coming in with graphite powder and just giving it a good liberal coat all over. And as we're doing this, we're also sort of polishing it slightly with the brush just to create that metallic look. And then once that's all done, we can come in and super glue the tracks on. So I'm just using a bit of super glue on some plastic here. If you actually put it on this type of uh, bag plastic, it doesn't dry. So it gives you a little bit more working time. Then just using a little micro applicator just to put that in place and then just tack all of the tracks down. Now we still have our tank in two halves, so we need to remove all of that overspray from all the joins. And then I'm just using contactor cement here, precision applicator cement gives, again, a bit more working time than Tamiya Thin. And this is the other area of this kit that you need to be aware of, is getting this hull on here at the back is a real pain in the ass. It requires a lot of jiggling about to get these two fenders through on this when these tracks are on. But a bit of wiggling, we got it there. And then we can put some Tamiya Extra Thin just in those joins just to make sure that those are completely cemented. Next thing I'm going to do is make a, an overall oil wash. I'm just using some odorless thinners. I've got some black Rowney Georgian oil paint here. And I'm taking some brown as well. This is some Windsor & Newton Burnt Umber. And I'm just adding a very small amount of the thinners. And it's important at this stage just add a small amount because otherwise it'll be really hard to get your oils to actually mix. They'll just go into a big lump in the middle of a lake of thinners. So this actually enables you to mix them up. Keep adding thinners, diluting it down, mixing it up again. You want a nice, even overall coat. You don't want big blobs of oil paint in there because it will ruin your model. So you can see here, very fluid, quite light in pigment. And I'm just going to go over and just apply this basically all over the model. So you can see it's not staining a huge amount. It's just gathering in those recesses to create, again, that illusion of shadow and just add a little bit of tonal variety overall to the model. So this also helps to take off the edges, if you like, of the dry brushing. So I'm going over the lower areas, the wheels first, but then just applying it over the entire model. If you do get any pooling areas on the larger surfaces, you want to wick that away and try and push it out into the, the crevices. One thing we don't want is great pools of wash. Once we've got the overall wash, we just take a, a little makeup sponge 
And you can also use cotton buds, and there are little sponges on sticks as well. And we're just using that to take off the, the very top of the highlights where that wash has gathered um, where we don't want it and again this creates a greater tonal variation it lightens those high points so creating a greater contrast between those and the areas that are remaining in shadow so here you can see i'm coming in just with those little eyeshadow applicators and these are all available on amazon they don't cost very much at all Once all of the, the wash has dried, I'm just going to come back and paint in all of those little pieces. Now that I didn't want to get any, any wash on or any of that dry brushing on. Things like the machine gun barrel at the rear of the turret. I'm also going to put graphite powder on the spare track links, as you can see here. And this gives you a good idea, this close-up of how that transforms the black, putting the graphite on into this nice shiny sort of dull metallic sheen. I'm also coming in, I've painted around these areas of the battle damage in black and now I'm just coming in and using the graphite just mainly on the main armour to create this graphite area of exposed metal. If you actually look at battle damage on tanks, uh, when shots come in and ricochet off like this, they do melt the armor and usually you end up with this sort of sputtering. So just giving this metallic effect here just creates that. At this point I'm going over some of the other detail parts. So here I'm just addressing the vision ports. This is Panzer Ace's periscopes. I'm just painting these inside. Obviously if you wanted to do this prior to putting on the model, you could, and then just mask these up, depending on how confident you are with your painting skills. I wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel. We're now on the way to 1,200 subscribers, which will date this video, I'm sure. I never thought that the channel would really grow in the way that it's grown over the past month, so thank you to everybody there. So I've done a couple of things along the way to help improve the quality of these videos for you. Firstly, I've got a new microphone. You may have noticed the quality of the audio changed uh, about a month or so ago, maybe, in some of the videos. And that takes a little while for them to, to sift through because some of the material I record was prior to that. But also, I've invested in a new camera lens. So some of the quality of the zoom shots that I was doing was mainly through digital zoom, which isn't great, and also it's harder to focus in that way so got a new pentax lens for my dslr so hopefully you'll start to see the quality of those shots when i'm actually building models improve uh, i've also started a patreon so if you really want to support the channel you can go to patreon i've got several levels of support there so we have a discord community which will start with with the patreon um we've got some merch we've got some stickers and mugs and t-shirts uh, I'll be doing raffles um, when we get to a certain threshold of Patreon subscribers. So it's just in its infancy, it's just literally started brand new. So if you want to support the channel physically and materially, that is the best way to do it. That helps me continue to invest in these materials uh, to help improve the content. Um, and also with some of those Patreon levels will be things like voting on what videos you want to see next from a list of what I've got in the pipeline along with things like giveaways and uh, the higher tiers, like enabling you to actually work with me on a topic and go through that. So it's a specific kit you want me to build, specific things you want to see, like particular weathering types, rust or whatever. So started that, we'll see where it goes. I have no particular expectations on that. And uh, just your subscription is fantastic support. Um, so thank you for all of all of that. Next thing I'm addressing is rust. So I'm going to be addressing rust mainly on the side armor skirts, where this metal is a lot thinner. And it's obviously not armored steel in the same way as the main body. So it does tend to, to rust more easily. And JS2s were subjected to some pretty horrific abuse. If you actually see pictures of them from the time, a lot of them don't really have these side skirts left on them. They've just been ripped off. So I wanted to do something a little bit less damaged than that. So this is not quite factory new. Next up, I just wanted to create a bit more definition in these engine grills. I'm not using any aftermarket stuff here, so just wanted to try and create the, the definition, the impression of these being deeper grills a bit more. And 
Tamiya panel accent is a really good way of doing that. So I'm just using the black here, just being fairly careful to avoid those frame edges here, just going in and creating that definition. Okay, with all that done, I'm actually sealing the model with Pledge. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use oils again on this, and I don't want to disturb the wash I've already got. So I'm just coming in, sealing everything with Pledge, and that will give us a nice base coat that won't be affected by the odorless thinners that I'm going to be using in the next steps. It also gives a good base for the decals, that are the next piece that we're going to go on to. So the decals I'm using here come from the, the Dragon Kit. So this is the symbol of the white bears. These were some uh, Russian units that were quite feared and involved in the taking of Berlin. So it's just a red star with a, a white bear over it. Just standard decal application using water on the pledge and just a coat of pledge over just to seal them down nicely. Unfortunately, when I came to the tank number decals, 20 years of being stored in variable containers and damp has not done them any favours. And I was only actually able to retrieve a single four and a one, which I transferred onto Tamiya tape. And I'm going to use this number basically as a stencil to cut out from the tape so I can use that as a guide to hand paint the tank numbers on. I'm going to be using Vallejo stencil for this that's slightly creamy off-white. And here you see I've got the cutout that I've made. I'm just using that as a guide. Make sure I get a nice straight edge and to keep the size of these numbers all the same when I come across and paint them. So of course if you weren't confident in your hand painting you can get an aftermarket decal set. But this is easy enough and I'm a cheapskate. I also just went over the white bears as well. There was a little bit of cracking on the decals and those. Also, I wanted to match the colour to the, the stencils that I was using for these numbers. So you can see once that's off, it's just a bit of touching up. Complete your old numbers. Both sides. And then it's adding the, the white identification stripes. This was to prevent any misidentification of units. Uh, these were hand painted by crews, so I'm just hand painting. I'm not being too careful here because some of them were pretty rough. I'm using a couple of coats, just to thin down paint. It's important to be able to get good application. Don't try and do all this all in once. There are plenty of references for these online both historical and people who have uh, done vehicles like this. Now with that done, I'm actually going back to the oils and I've got various different colors of oils here. And what I'm doing with this is I'm just using them as color filters. So I'm just putting little random spots of different colors. I've got green, black, yellow, red, and then I'm just going in here with some odorless thinners and just spreading those out. So this creates uh, an oil filter of these different colors over the top of your base coat, just to create some tonal variation, some interest, make it look, look less regular and more natural. Now the good thing about oils is you get plenty of working time. If you don't like an effect that you've created, you can just add some thinners and wipe them off. And that's why we wanted the pledge coat on before to protect our initial oil wash from coming off or being reactivated when we do this step. So once that's dry, we crack out the weathering powders. These are just the ones that I made from chalk pastels in my prior video, which you can find linked here. And I'm just doing the exhaust staining. So this is pretty messy, so make sure you do this on an area where you can, can wipe all of it down afterwards. And the muzzle brake staining on the barrel here. 
here I'm coming in just again creating a little bit more tonal variation with various greens so just putting these on most of it comes off it just stains the surface a little bit obviously Berlin during those final days of the war was just rubble everywhere so there's a lot of dust so I just wanted to put these different greys mainly on the tracks and the wheels and some of the front of the bumpers just to really recreate that dust being thrown up being collecting on the tracks and the wheels As I showed in the weathering powders video, you can also create uh, more discreet streaks with weathering powders, which is just what I'm doing here, just showing where that exhaust is rusted uh, and the rain has run down and just creating a little streaks across there. Doing the same thing here on the shovel. Just going back to the turret where these handles are welded on. Again, they're just tack welded onto the turret, so not fantastic welds. Getting rust on these is something I expect to happen quite a lot. The last piece of weathering I'm doing is just using this secret weapon, Fresh Oil, just to come around these extra fuel tanks and just put a little bit of oil where it's stained around the, the filler cap. So just to give you an idea of what all of that's done, this is a little T70 just sprayed in the same way that I sprayed this tank. And then this is the finished model next to it, just to show you how all of that has come together to create a much more interesting tonal variation across the surface of basically just a green tank. So let's look at the finished model. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. Please like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. It's the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like it. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.